Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Delegates at Labour's conference in Brighton have just voted to back Jeremy Corbyn on Brexit. It means the party won't campaign to remain in the EU in the next general election. It comes after a fierce debate over Labour's Brexit policy from Brighton. Our political editor, Laura Koonsberg, has the latest. Where are we going now? Yep, OK, let's go. We're going to... Where is he taking the Labour Party? Out of the European Union or to campaign now to stay? Are you confident quest. the party You're will buy your Brexit? questions at people. It's quite rude, actually. Thank you very much. Jeremy Corbyn's been surrounded by resistance to his plan to stay neutral until after an election. And Emily's got a valid view to express, and others have a different view. It's been a torrid argument for the leadership to make, because millions of Labour voters wanted to leave the EU, but the party's heart is Remain. What's going on? I mean, you're saying this is an honest debate, but people are furious about what's happening. There's lots of emotion, no doubt about that. It's understandable, really, but I quite like that. I quite, I'd, I'd rather people are honest about their emotions on all of this. But in expressing that emotion, at the end of the day, actually, I do, I do think people will come together. Are you proud of what the Labour Party is doing this week, all the skullduggery behind the scenes? I'm proud we're having an open democratic debate. I really am. I really am. Look, we're socialists and we're idealists, but also we have a propensity to plot every now and again as well. <laughs> Submission, there's plotting going on. <laughs> Not at all. The song's the same, but there's a new resistance to Mr Corbyn. The leadership had cooked up an agreement with the big powerful unions to stick to the line of not supporting leave or remain right now. The country needs to hear a united Labour voice. Back that, back him, his ally urged. I implore you. Please give Jeremy the support he needs later so that Prime Minister Corbyn can lead us to a bright new dawn. But the biggest union doesn't see it that way, wanting to pick Remain now. It's time to do the right thing, support a second referendum and campaign for Remain, support Composite 13. Applause and cheers echoed on the platform again and again. Labour is a Remain party. Remain, revolt, reform. I know young people will hold their vote against us unless we'll tell them we'll campaign to remain. I want to see Jeremy Corbyn in number 10 and campaigning to remain is the way to do it and the only way to do it. Solidarity. But hold on, you're watching a clamour over the control of this party, not just the EU. We stand behind Jeremy Corbyn. Okay, we need to support him, we need to trust him and his team. We cannot tell Brexit voters that they are stupid and that they are racist. Back your leader. Support Jeremy. As time wore on, less and less about the EU, this was more and more about loyalty to Jeremy Corbyn. Okay, that is clearly carried. And in the last few moments, the bid to change his policy failed. Not without protest, not without cries. This argument is not over, not even close. And Sophie, it was pretty chaotic in there as the votes were carried out. And I expect there's going to be a lot of pretty robust argument about whether or not it should have been sorted just with a show of hands and whether or not, in fact, the party should have had an official vote with cards counted and actually being aware of what the precise numbers were. Because this is such an important decision for the Labour Party and the leadership was determined to try to fend off the attempt to force them to budge position. They did do that. They got the support from the members to try to stay exactly where they are but there's a sense here the argument's been so vigorous the genie might not go back in the bottle our political editor laura koonsberg in brighton thank you today here in brighton in a passionate debate labor tried to hammer out a brexit policy that the party could all at the least publicly support and the voters could at the least live with it has decided to support a second referendum within six months of a general election, but not which way to campaign or support in that referendum. It was a huge victory for Jeremy Corbyn. After speaker after speaker called for loyalty to him and to reject Remain. Paul McNamara has this. That's the sound of a party deciding on a policy 
and rallying around its leader. Labour is not a party of Remain, but a party of wait and see. They now have a policy, but no signs of any rifts being healed. This is how close the vote was. Thank you, and all those against. Close enough to cause a little confusion. Sorry, I thought it was one way, and Jenny said something else, so... It is lost, yeah. Yes, that, that was lost. And this Adler. was the angry reaction. Conference, this is one of the most important decisions that the Labour Party will take this decade. And I think we deserve a card vote here. She didn't get her second vote and policy was set. It's an utter disgrace that we weren't given a proper say in the most democratic way possible. And, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm ashamed of the party today. What we've just done is vote to become third place behind the Lib Dems. Very sensible. Earlier in the day, it looked as if the vote could go against Jeremy Corbyn when Unison and their 1.3 million members said they wanted to campaign for Remain. I'd be wrong to say I'm not disappointed, obviously. It looks silly because I argued um, for the point of view that lost. They're absolutely buoyed by the discussion. Throughout the day, the party split was on show for all to see as they tried to thrash out a policy. We'll give the public a voice, a vote, democracy. Labour is a Remain party. Remain, revolt, reform. We cannot disregard the 2016 referendum or attempt to leave behind our heartlands in the same way the Tories have done. We need a clear stance. It's not good enough to say we'll decide our policy on a later date. Mr Corbyn, what's going to happen later on? After two days defined by division and now the spectre of defeat, Jeremy Corbyn wasn't keen to answer questions earlier on. Mr Corbyn, will you respect the vote? And as he toured the conference floor, the frustrated leader lost his cool. Can I say to our friends from the media, can I just say this to you? This is our conference, these are our stalls, your behaviour, pushing past people, pushing people over and pushing past people who want to legitimately visit stalls is totally unacceptable. Can I ask you to behave with respect to our members and our conference? Tonight, many party members members left the conference hall angry, many left happy, but they all left finally knowing what the party policy was on Brexit. So is a vote now for Labour a vote to remain or to leave? We're joined now by two Labour MPs, Alison McGovern uh, and Stephen Kinnock in a moment, but first our political correspondent who you heard just now. Uh, now what do you think about the closeness of the vote? Was there any sense in the hall that perhaps it wasn't correct? I think if you spoke to people mm. who, went, who the vote went against, they would absolutely say that. I mean, you saw some of the ones that we were talking to absolutely distraught. One chap we spoke to, you know, almost in tears at the end of it. But what was really interesting through the course today, none of this has really been that clear cut. One of the votes uh, was on the, the position of the NEC. I've been talking to members of the NEC, that's the governing body of the Labour Party, during the day. Lots of them hadn't agree to the wording of it. There were, there were emails going through, there were emails going around about the, about the wording of it. There was meant to be a meeting this morning. That meeting ended up being cancelled last night. And the other interesting thing that happened here today in the conference hall was that while you saw lots of people getting up on stage saying, back Jeremy Corbyn and let's decide a position later on, you didn't hear very many voices actually backing Brexit. Very good. Thanks very much indeed. Well, now, uh, Alison McGovern, you, you back a second referendum and you back Remain. So where are you today? Well, we've moved a long way from where we were this time last year, which was we were saying when well, we need to keep a public vote on the table. And in fact, I think what we've seen over the year is the Tories absolutely dis disintegrate over Brexit because in the end, this is their issue. And we in the Labour movement are trying to find a way through, which is to find a tolerable form of Brexit and give the public the final say over whether or not they really want to go through with this. Now, I and lots of other people will be wholehearted campaigners, as we always have been for our membership of the European Union. And despite some confusion on the conference floor, that is absolutely clear. Now, Stephen Kinnock, you don't back a second refer referendum. All you want to do is to renegotiate and then do it. That's right. I take the old-fashioned view that I stood in 2017 on a manifesto that said Labour uh, respects the result of the re referendum but must leave with a deal. And I, I think we should have stuck to our guns uh, since we started to the muddy the waters. 
we've ended up with a very confusing message for people on the doorstep in our constituencies. And of course, we've ended up with rather shambolic, chaotic scenes today. We could have avoided all that if we'd just stuck to our so guns. So it's a betrayal to have a second referendum? I think that the uh, democratic uh, result of 52-48 is to leave the European Union, but stay close, have that uh, uh, strong economic uh, uh, relationship. And that is what we should have stuck to, because the political messaging around this is disastrous. I just don't, I just don't understand what could be undemocratic about offering the public the final say. The referendum was three and a half years ago. If it had been a general election result, we'd be having another one by now. There were many flaws in that referendum that we need to rectify um, so that we know that people are absolutely clear what it is that they're voting on. So the fact is that the Labour Party and the Labour movement is pro-European. It has been for a long time and that's what we've seen again today at the conference. Isn't that true? It is a pro-European movement and, and it's, it's very fond of its European connections. I, I campaigned for Remain and I regret the result of the referendum but as a Democrat I believe that the result of a massive democratic exercise needs to be implemented before you try to change it. And the I incredible also... thing is that you're actually all hung by the same problem which is that the referendum was far too close for comfort. I mean three or four percent between one and the other is obviously nonsense. I mean most countries that have a referenda have much bigger margins that people have to surpass before there's a decision. Yes, but the people of this country were told that the result would hold and it would hold for a generation. And so we have to recognise that 5248, the mandate in aggregate is to move house but stay in the so same the neighbourhood. People of this country were told lots of things by David Cameron and, you know, he's been back recently, I think, demonstrating all the flaws of the things that he said at the time. You know, I think that we know now so much more about Brexit than we ever did then and it's time to give people the well, final say. What are you say. going to do on the hustings? You, uh, you're going to say, I'm terribly sorry, we don't actually have a policy on whether we leave or not. Well, is that a, a nice candid well, way to talk I, to all I, I, have, I have a policy <laughs> and I'll be saying I think that we should be a member of the European Union because it's best for our economy, it's best for our rights, it's best for the future for our kids. So I think, you know, Labour MPs are pretty clear and Labour members and activists are clear too. So we have a political party that's going to talk out both sides of its mouth. I think it's absurd, John. I agree with you. I don't think it passes the doorstep test to say we're going to get a better deal and then we're going well, to campaign against the deal we've just done. And nobody in Brussels is going to take Aren't that position seriously. Aren't you both banking either? on the idea that actually uh, Brexit won't be the most important issue at the next election? But, well, you know, I, I so, pray for that. No, <laughs> I, do, I, do, I don't think we're banking on it because actually when I talk to my constituents on the doorstep, as Stephen says, what passes the doorstep test is telling people that we want to shut food banks. And what passes the doorstep test is the issues that both matter much more to me and Stephen than this Brexit chaos because that is just a Tory mess. Do you think it is possible that under, Labour, under a Labour government, Britain will leave Europe? Well, I think that we have tried as Labour MPs to put forward a kind of Brexit that no, we could agree. Possible? Is it possible that you may leave Europe it under would, a Labour it, government? We always said if we could get the kind of deal that would be a compromise, it could be possible. But compromise seems impossible. That, that, that's, that's why we have Norway, to give the uh, public... Answer. That's right, but that, that's why we have to give the public the final say, because this has gone on far too long and we need to bring it to an end. Boris Johnson is in uh, a fix because he's either going to have to resign or break the law or do a deal. It's, there's no doubt to, in my mind that that third one will be more palatable to him. He should bring that deal to Parliament, give Parliament the opportunity to debate it, amend it, and then put a vote to the, to, to the members of Parliament. There that's is a the problem on the it. referendum, and that is that there's no way you're respecting that referendum if you have another. Well, I don't see why that should be the case. I don't see why more democracy is bad for democracy. And as, as I said before, you know, the referendum was some time ago. What's wrong with giving the public the final say? You know, we do that as a trade union movement. When you negotiate a pay deal, the members get the final say, and that's all we're talking about in this It's case. a tasteless question, but the truth is there are quite a lot of people who've died since the last election, the last referendum. We don't know how they voted, but a good number of older it, people did vote. Uh, to leave and a good number of younger people now are on the register who would want to vote to stay. It, it is a tasteless question if you don't mind me agreeing true. with you John but actually you know lots of older people voted to remain as well I personally think that it's a bit of a stereotype and actually what matters to people is what they know now about Brexit not what they knew in 2016. Is a fudge the worst of all worlds or is it rather cunning? 
I think that our country has been radicalised and deeply polarised by Brexit, and I think another referendum will turbocharge those divisions. So I want to see compromise. I believe that when a democracy loses the ability to compromise, it is in serious risk of no longer being a democracy. But there's a difference between a fudge and a compromise. A fudge is just kicking the can down the road. A compromise is when you say, we accept the result, but we must leave with a deal. But and I think we should have stuck to our guns now on that. before yeah, the election we... of, of leave, fudge, and stay. That, that's the three party yeah, and, positions. And, and with respect, I think the opportunity to bring the country together over a compromise was long ago. You know, Brexit is not allowing anybody to compromise, it's just dividing us. So I think we should find a tolerable way of leaving and give the public the final say. And do you actually want this or do you want our European membership? Which, you know, as most people in the Labour Party know, is the best deal going. Did you see how tight that vote was? I mean, did, did, are you really satisfied with it? I mean, should it not have been a card vote? It looked quite chaotic, but I thought it was, it was a sort of symbol of the general chaos of the last few days on Brexit. I, it's a shame we've muddied the waters. We should have stuck but to I our guns. But I thought this conference was going to be about ending the chaos. Yeah, I think it would have been better if it could have been organised so that it was decisive. But the reality is we do know where the Labour Party and the Labour movement is on this issue. And frankly, to be honest, this is... This is not really our issue, is it? This is a Tory mess. And what we should do is focus on the things that we really want to change about the country. And you've been trying to do that, but it is drowned at all times by Brexit. But I agree absolutely with Ali. A general election with Brexit overshadowing it will be a gift to the polarisers and the opportunists, the Liberal Democrats and the Brexit Party. Labour is a whole nation party. We're about bringing people together. Let's have a general election about jobs, the economy, <laughs> schools, education, our kids, the health service, all the stuff we used to talk about in British politics. Let's get Brexit done and let's move on to those Stephen issues. Stephen Kinnock, Alison McGovern, thank you both very much. Thank you. Now, in what would once have been considered normal political times, party conferences before a likely general election were used as a springboard, of course, into an upcoming campaign. Certainly, there were some eye-catching, if expensive, policies at Labour's conference today, a 32-hour working week among them. More on that in a moment. But as for the big and probably decisive issue of the day, delegates are still keeping the party's option open on Brexit. There was what appeared to be decisive backing in the conference hall for Jeremy Corbyn's leave or remain neutrality. Facing a bank of cameras at his party conference, Jeremy Corbyn was not relishing the attention or the questions about his Brexit policy. We're doing Thank stall you. visits Thank at the you. moment and I think you're shouting, you quest you're shouting questions at people. It's quite rude, actually. Not many here are neutral on Brexit, but that's the position the party will now try to maintain heading into a general election. Comrades, we cannot win an election by not taking sides. Leavers think we are Remainers and Remainers think we don't know what we're talking about. After a day of passionate debate, when even members of the shadow cabinet contradicted the leader's position. With your endorsement today conference and with the instructions I hope you give us today, I believe that we must strive night and day, whatever it takes, to keep Britain in the European Union. It was the unions who rode to his rescue with a plea to back the leader. I implore you, please give Jeremy the support he needs later so that Prime Minister Corbyn can lead us to a bright new dawn. And the delegates did just that, voting against adopting a Remain position. All those against. That, that was lost. But with the chair appearing confused, delegates demanded a recount. Sorry, sorry, <laughs> listen. So it's the decision, the decision has to be, as I called it, um, that it was lost, and that's very difficult. The debate has been impassioned, the conference hall and the party clearly deeply split but loyalty to the leadership has triumphed and Labour will go into a general election still trying to straddle both leave and remain. I am pleased because I think you've seen huge support for Jeremy Corbyn. Uh, you know, the media have been trying to say that he's under all kinds of pressure. It's been palpable to me. Some Labour members less delighted. What do you think of Labour going into an election without a clear policy on Brexit? 
can I sell this to a voter in two sentences and can I answer their legitimate questions? I think it, conf it confuses voters completely because it's very hard to, to um, argue for something and then say I'm going to completely disregard it. It is, conf it is confusing, however, we've got to support Jeremy for the general election. A lot of upset amongst members afterwards. Are you, are you personally disappointed? Well, I am disappointed. Um, but, you know, a party has to make decisions and we make decisions in that democratic way as we did this afternoon. Many members believe this would be the conference where Labour got off the fence on Brexit, but with key unions framing it as a vote of confidence in Corbyn himself, loyalty won the day. Romilly Weeks, News at 10, Brighton. Well, our political editor Robert Peston joins us now from Brighton. So a big victory for Jeremy Corbyn, but big concern now, Robert, about how this could play out in a general election. Well, look, I think there are three important things to say about this vote on what position Labour should take in a referendum. First, enormous emotional backing for Jeremy Corbyn in the hall here against a background of lots of talk in the wider country that his popularity is waning. Certainly not among the people here. Secondly, there are many Labour MPs, many Labour members who would have preferred Labour to have backed Remain and they say it'll be very hard on the doorstep in a general election to sell this policy because they can't answer the question that they'll be asked in a general election, well, which side are you on, leave or remain? Because the answer at the moment is we don't know yet. That'll be decided after the election. And then finally, it leaves... England, in terms of the Labour Party, separate from Wales and Scotland, because the Scottish and Welsh Labour parties have come out unambiguously for Remain. And it is an oddity that England alone is still on the fence. But Jeremy Corbyn believes that in a general election, this is the best way forward. His critics fear this will drive Remain, remain supporting Labour members and, excuse me, supporters into the arms of the Liberal Democrats. And as in politics, of course, Robert, it eclipses all else Brexit, doesn't it? But this on a day when Labour had some pretty important policy announcements too. Yes, exactly right. I mean, one of the extraordinary things, if it hadn't been for the Brexit noise, we'd be talking about some very big policy announcements by John McDonnell. Two of them stu stood out for me. He has pledged that over 10 years, a Labour government would reduce the working week to just four days. and He'd set up a commission that every year would recommend longer holidays for all of us. And he also said that there would be free personal care for the elderly funded by £6 billion of tax increases. And that would be a universal benefit, no longer forcing individuals to sell their homes to pay for that care. Now, in normal circumstances, those sorts of policies would, I think, attract a lot of attention in a general election. But what we don't know is whether the continuing furore of Brexit will drown them out. Robert, thank you. Stig Abel and Olivia yeah. are here. Um, well, welcome. Uh, let's start straight away with the Labour conference. Corbyn sees off um, the Remain demand in this conference chaos, as even The Guardian says. Yeah, I mean, sees off is probably pushing it <laughs> quite strongly. I don't think it was quite as decisive as that. What happened was Corbyn had this motion that Labour in a general election doesn't support either leave or remain. It remains neutral and MPs can choose which individual position they want to back personally. Um, and a lot of Remainers in the Labour Party at conference want Labour to back Remain in a, in a general election, including basically every Labour MP you've ever heard of and almost all of the shadow cabinet. Um, so then there was this, that we had a day of debates in the Labour conference of delegates standing up and saying, no, we've got to support the leader, whatever Corbyn says on this should go. It's all about loyalty to the leader and the others saying, no, we've got to stay in the EU. And then you've got this vote at the end of the day, which, uh, which the person who... The, the, the person who was overseeing the vote, and it was a, it was a show of hands vote, and she said, um, yeah, the, the, the Corbyn's motion didn't pass, Labour's going to go forward being a pro-Remain party. And then Jenny, For Jenny Formby whispered in her ear and she said, no, sorry, sorry, I got that wrong after Should all. Should we watch that moment? Yeah, let's watch it is, that. It is incredible. <laughs> let's have a look. Sorry, I thought it was one win. Jenny said something else, so... It is lost. Yes, that, that was lost. And then everyone started singing, oh, Jeremy Corbyn. 
So at one level, that is a visual metaphor for the whole country. But because... a lot of people were shouting that there needs yeah. to be a card vote as well. Exactly. So they're saying, why don't you count this properly, considering this is the most important mm -hmm. policy Labour will have this year, or indeed almost any other, but they didn't do that. And so it looks a shambles. The, 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 the audience was split. They didn't really know how to deal with it. So it's like Brexit to the n nth degree. Um, and I kind of wonder if what Labour's position is going to be going into an election, because if I care passionately about Remain, I have to vote for Liberal Democrat, Plaid, SNP or Green, because I can't trust Labour to deliver me Remain, because they will offer a referendum, and Jeremy Corbyn saying, well, maybe, maybe not, I might even, I might even campaign for my deal, a, a softer Brexit. Mm. If I believe in Brexit, I can't vote but for I Labour, think the hope is... because... Uh, they're saying they really are inclining towards Remain, so they're going to end up pleasing absolutely nobody. But I think the hope is that, that there isn't... They, they just can hold off having a general election, because that's, for them, the beauty of the Fixed-Term Parliament Act is they have to back a general election, and what they can do is just wait it out until Brexit, one way or another, is sorted, either with a deal or with no deal, um, and, then, and then they don't have to talk about Brexit at all. They can just muddle along, not, not annoying any... Well, sort of annoying everyone, but sort of not annoying anyone with this completely ambivalent policy, and then... Can campaign on the things which they really care about. And so actually the shambolic aspect of this is a bit troubling because they've just got to look like they can be in government. Because at some point political gravity is going to hit the Tory party. Not least, it's been in power in coalition or otherwise since 2010. Yeah. It is not going to deliver a good Brexit. It has not done lots of things while it's been faffing around with Brexit. So theoretically, a non-Brexit election should, should be, be a gift, gift to Brexit. But exactly, I think this is the problem here, that, that actually Brexit in a way, isn't really the story here. The story is that Corbyn, it feels like Corbyn has just kind of lost control. You've got delegates, you know, all the people who loved Jeremy Corbyn, who were shouting his name, are, are now saying that he's a traitor. You've got MPs Some of them like, are still singing his name. Some, some of them are so, still, so the, yeah. They're still the ones in the conference at the party watching his speech are singing his name, but you've got, you've got Labour supporters at home, you've got, you've got the sort of le metropolitan Liberals who, who were very pro-Corbyn and now moving towards the Liberal Democrats, and you've got MPs within within his own party, just that it's been simmering below the surface, the Parliamentary Labour Party's difficulties with Jeremy Corbyn, and it feels like it's just bubbling up again. And then there are accusations of incompetence from his staff. It does feel a bit like it's falling apart for Corbyn. Happy.